we honor you, we appreciate you, we acknowledge you. All those African women, 20 years to 29 years. <laughs> we honor you, we appreciate you, we acknowledge you. All those African women, 10 years to 19 years. If they are none, that is presently, we still honor you, we appreciate you, and we acknowledge you. All those young African women, nine years and under, please stand up. We honor you, we appreciate you, and we acknowledge you. We ask all our men to stand up for us to show you our appreciation. We appreciate you, we acknowledge you. Because in the African tradition, you must have balance. It's about male and female. Thank you. You know, when you're about town, you say, I go rub away what you say. Everyone for a day. But I tell you, Paul, we are very appreciative of all those who are here with us this evening to celebrate with this young sister, Dorsha Charles, our sixth annual recognizing our warrior women. It's also our celebration of the decade for people of African descent. It's our responsibility to take care of our business. And the traditional African women organization is an organization to be a voice for our African women to help and support them in the heritage, the community, and for reclaiming our traditional cultures and tradition and we are like as we have been exposed and a lot of the colonial behaviors and tradition has influenced our tradition. So Tao is reclaiming our traditions, our cultures and we are taking back our sovereignty. Thank you very much for giving me the honor to speak. What we are going to go into this evening is another initiation in the African tradition. We have five types of initiation rites of passage, as we acknowledge. Birth and naming, the first one. Puberty, the awareness, behavior, and biology. Third, marriage in concert with someone else, bonding, two families, joining, children, etc. Four, Changing into eldership, what we are doing this evening. And five, travel to Urun. Urun is what we call heaven. We will wear down Christian people would say heaven or death. So the fifth initiation in the African um, tradition is traveling to Urun. Because when people pass away, we don't say we die or are rest in peace. We say smooth transition on time. So, I have here in our midst one of our colleagues, supporter, and who have supported and do a number of research in putting the traditional African woman on the right path in our traditions and our culture. And I'm going to ask briefly for Dr. Aman Salasakana briefly explain to us this rite of passage that we are about to do. A person from birth enters into a new world and there's a series of initiations or a series of introductions given to that child from birth to death. As you enter into the world, you are given a certain type of initiation to introduce you into this new world. And when you die, you are also given certain ceremonies to send you on your way. 
in between life and transition or death, there are a variety of things that we confront. One of the major, major things is character. Um, I think in Yoruba it's referred to as evil feeling. That is a primary factor in determining, for example, whether someone will be initiated in the first beginning or not. It also determines traditionally and anciently whether you'll be admitted into a school of higher learning. And school of higher learning traditionally is not open to the general public. It's open only to those people who pass the trials of good character or evil feeling. In that way, um, one has some minimal assurance of the ability of that person to withstand temptations in terms of using power to overcome people. I'll just give, give you one little demonstration. My mentor is an evil man, Professor um, uh, Ume. And he told me there was a man in his village, oldest man, who had the power to transform himself into a leopard. And the members, elders of the village, asked him to pass on that knowledge to the oldest member after him of the, of the village. And he said he wouldn't do that because that man is his enemy and will continue to do negative things. So after long discussion, this is just his eldest son. He said, my eldest son has a very bad temper and he doesn't qualify for it. They insisted that he must pass it on to someone. So he said, okay, he will give a test to the son. And they have masquerades. And I have seen that expressed in Trinidad here amongst um, uh, black Indians. So when you see another um, mask coming from another village, you confront that person with words. And if the person's words overcomes or triumphs over the opponent, the opponent would concede defeat. I have seen Indians as a boy take off the costume and smash it on the, on the ground and concede defeat. I have seen it in my own eyes, but he told, told that to me. So the same thing happened. The opponent beat the, the man's son. He had given him a leaf to wrap around his wrist. And he said, do not break this in any circumstances unless it's like a death. He was so angry, he broke the, he broke the leaf. And a flock of, of uh, bees came down on people and stung them. So he went back to the, to, the, to the elders and he told them, you see, I cannot pass on this to anybody. And he did not pass on to anybody when he died. That's what we talk about character. You have to have that ability not to use your power to overcome people. Because you want something and that person doesn't voluntarily give it to you, you will use power to overcome them. That is not supposed to be done. So in the process of growing up, you're always measured, not for anything else, but for your character. And that's really the essence of, um, of a rites of passage, to strengthen your moral fortitude, to give you moral vision, to instill a deep, ethical sense of belonging and of measure and of measure so that you don't go on the negative path. That's it, thank you. Thank you very much. And now we have our guest artist, Nafta Pujo. We are so free, yeah, yeah, yeah.
thing that I want to be. Alright, so moving right along, we have the biography by Aina Alukuri. Yes. So welcome to our lovely presence. tradition as an Obatala priestess, I have a, an additional responsibility. When I found out that Obatala was my divinity, it fit in with my personality, with the things I love to do. I teach. I'm meeting this fine young lady, Dosha Charles, made it even more, um, what's that? relevant and important to make sure that I create opportunities for you to interact with others. Dosha Charles is known as the resilient warrior. Her story is one of success through struggles where she was able to overcome every obstacle she encountered. She is an educational development coach and consultant and a certified trauma and crisis management specialist. That is just to say that she's certified with what she already achieved in her life. Because she went through many crises and some traumas. But she showed her resilience. Today, Dorsha uses each experience along with her education. Dorsha is passionate about empowering students to have a balance between their mental wellness and academic performance in education and the development of educating our children. Thank you for your work. Thank you for all the people who you've interacted with who have put your work into practice. Thank you, Tawo, Siba, Akinde. Thank you for recognizing your work. Continue to rise. Continue to do well because a rising tide lifts all this. Ms. Dorsha Charles, take your seat. The instrument ceremony for Ms. Dorsha Charles. You cover in white cloth. You cover in the purity of your ancestors who now surround you. Your friends are here to witness. Your children are here to witness. Your grandchildren are here to witness. All the blessings come from those around you. Give thanks. Ms. Dosh Charles, you have taken care of your mother. Ms. Dosha Charles, you have taken care of your brother, Dosha Charles. You, have, you still take care of your offspring. Dosha Charles, they shout age people in home. They sh but, Ms. Dosha Charles, all of your family will take care of you. You will live to see the sun. You will outlive your, outlive and bury your enemies, Ms. Dorsha Charles. This is your seat. You have taken your seat. Be upon it, like a noble daughter of Ida. Take your seat. You may rest upon it, and you will honor you, as you have known, Ms. Dorsha Charles. Take seat. Dorsha Charles, it is your throne. Oromela, you are the leader and I am the follower. You are the 
the sage that teach one wise things, like one's parents and ancestors. If I is a question here, whom among the Orishas can accompany one devotee on his destined journey over the sea without turning back? If I said, it's your Ori. It is Ori alone who can accompany his own divinity to the destined journey over the sea without turning back. Urmala said, when I'm an Ifa precise, people say that his Ifa instrument should be thrown into a ditch. When devotees of Shango, people say his Shango instrument should be thrown away. When the devotees of Osh Orisha Shangla die, people say his paraphernalia should be buried with him. Urmala said, even since human beings have been dying, whom head is ever served from the body before burial? If I say, it is Ori, it is Ori alone. Who can accompany his devotees on a destined journey overseas without turning back? If we have money, it is Ori whom I will praise. My Ori, it is you. All good things that I have on earth, it is Ori whom I praise. My Ori is you. Ori, I hate you. You who do not forget your devotee. You who bless your devotee more quickly than other Orisha. No God bless a woman without the consent of one Ori, of her Ori. Ori, I hail you. Shame. You will allow children to be born alive. Shame. A person who sacrifice is acceptable by his ori should rejoice exceedingly. Miss Joshua Charles, Dosha Charles, you are the life force. You wear white of purity. Your family is with you. Your enemies are defeated. I ask of you to take your seat. Take your seat. was the first year she invited me to her camp, the A plus and Ventures Advantage. And I'm so grateful. That was the first year actually. 2017 was the first year that I created Survival Scholars um, after much prayer and fasting. And that was the first time actually I had a program or I coordinated the program in terms of moving her students in the camp. So I was really, really grateful for the opportunity and I really want to encourage our elder women to of course give young people opportunity, help them to realize their potential and their abilities and nurture and help them on the journey of doing that because that is what Auntie and I did for me. And I'm so extremely grateful for how believing in me and choosing me to really and truly begin 
and blossom the way that I did. So I'm really grateful um, for you and Zena and for today. Thank you all so much. What we recognize in the African communities mm -hmm. is that we have a lot of African people who do wonderful things. Even the women, most of the kind of women do well. And there's very little appreciation is given to the women. In the African tradition, as I go right back before slavery, the woman was the most respected because truly woman you get both male and female. Because nobody else brings forth the life but the woman. So they understand that the force. So we are reclaiming our tradition, we are reclaiming our sovereignty, and anyway, they have young women, elder women, African women who are doing extremely good work and not being acknowledged. It's our responsibility to acknowledge them. It's not the government and whatever, whatever. This is the decade of people of African descent. It is not going to end at 2024 20, December, but we have to start it again. And Tao traditional African organization is a very small organization, but we do have, as people say, Talawa.
want to have our final drumology. So we can we cut the African one's skirt this evening, <laughs> right? From our Peloton African drummers. I want to thank our ancestors. Without our ancestors, we wouldn't know how to praise the Almighty. We really want to thank our ancestors. And one time I'll slip in thanking Iyaga. <laughs> yes, it, it was really wonderful. As they say, those who have eyes to see will see, those who have ears to hear will hear. And some of us who have body to move, we move them. Yes, so. We give thanks to our ancestors and our divinities, our Ori. And for uh, an event like this, Tabo is the traditional African women's organization. Unapologetically rooted in our tradition, but we embrace all. Ms. Dorsha Charles is not a traditional African um, what is the word on the devotee? Yes? Thank you for accepting, being comfortable, and, and being involved in the processes that you may not have known about. I certainly didn't tell you nothing. <laughs> yes? Thank you to our divinities, our ancestors, and our Ori. Your Ori is well blessed. All of us, our Ori is our head, our inner head. Our consciousness agreed long before. Because if it's in making juggling your schedule is challenging. Imagine from how many years before from a room you had to decide that you're going to be here. You're going to put aside everything and be fully involved. So we give thanks to our Ori that we are here. We give thanks to the elders in our midst who are here with us. Dr. Aman Saba Sakana, Ia, Ia Ayoka, she's the leader of Ile Egbe Yemoja, Auntie Sakia <laughs> of Emancipation Support Committee, Dr. Charles, Dr. Oh, no, Dr. James, who's Dr. Charles? <laughs> but thank you, Dr. Charles. Yes, the drummers. And, and we have an elder amongst us in the drumming too. So that balance between the elders and the youth is necessary. Thank you very much, elder, drummer, and one time I'll thank the drummers as well. 